Your electric guitar playing on Threesome Volume 1 shows an obvious influence from artists like the Beatles and T-Rex. Um, but after Jellyfish and then Imperial Drag, you played guitar for Alice Cooper. Then you sang on the first Slash's Snake Pit record. That's a, that's a huge style departure, um, which really shows your versatility. Now, what led you in that hard rock direction? And then what let you, and then what led you back to the more vintage style sound of the Licorice Quartet? Well, that's a good question, but I would say that at least in my heart of hearts, I do love rock music, uh, you know, along with pop rock and power pop and kind of all the subgenres that may go with it. So uh, to me, it's not a big stretch whether uh, there's more going on in a, in a kind of a power pop arrangement versus a, a good rock and roll song as well. So that's my position on that. Okay. Now, I'd like to talk about the guitars, amps, and effects that you use on the new record. Um, if you want, we, we can just go, it's easy enough, there are just four songs on the, on the first EP. So maybe if we take a step through the, through the record, um, Fadoodle sounds like that classic transistor radio sounding, you know, guitar, you know, tell me about your guitars on there. Okay, yeah, sure. Um... Fadoodle, I believe that that one was, believe it or not, it was one of the uh, Indonesian Strat, Squire Strats um, that I'd got from uh, a guy that used to do the music for SpongeBob, I believe. I got from a friend. It, um, and the thing about that, if you want to get technical, I mean, it's um, Squires are great guitars. You can pick them up and do anything with them. But their electronics are a little bit shoddy. So uh, there was something about the filter in those cheap um, tone and uh, volume pots that kind of gave it that uh, kind of stratty, really strat, uh, um, you know, kind of sound that actually really works well on tracks. So uh, I know that that guitar is on there. Okay. And do you remember what? what amp you were playing through? Uh, that would have probably been, um, I used two amplifiers on the majority of this with the direct signal. So um, that would have been a Jaguar amp that Henry Cliff had made for me uh, some years ago. And he did some mods on it for me and it was, you know, really cool. And uh, I use that just for the basic tone purity part of the uh, the equation then i used a marshall jcm 2000 that i've had for years and modded it uh, on another amp in another isolated uh, cabinet situation so i'm really a big fan of uh, just doing it with mics and preamps and amplifiers still you know um, so that was my basic uh, setup for this licorice quartet stuff okay and and I know on there's a magic number. It sounded like there was either slide guitar or pedal steel. What were you What were you doing there? Uh, uh, well, no, it wasn't. It was actually just string bending with a, um, a Telecaster. A lot of the tracks that I did on this licorice record were uh, the Telecaster that I had in Jellyfish. It's like it's a, like a 1993 American butterscotch um 52 reissue i think and so uh you know that guitar really is all over the record um and that's just um uh, you know kind of approximating something with that would sound a bit like uh pedal steel or or whatever lines but more in a, in a kind of dreamy damaged surfer kind of context yeah and you play a ton of acoustic guitar on the record as well. Um, what what do you what do you play there? What's your what's your choice? Well, my choice is the only guitar that I own, uh, and that's kind of how I look at it. I'd, I'd love to have some more acoustic guitars, obviously, but um, I have a Takamine Dreadnought from like about the same time, ninety three, ninety four, and it's 
pretty much been the acoustic guitar on all of my records. You know, any time I need acoustic guitar, um, aside from maybe nylon string, of course, but that's uh, pretty simple on that. Yeah. Um, on light on the song Lighthouse Spaceship, um, you do a surprising flamenco style acoustic d during the verses. Was that also on your Takamine? I should say Takamine, technically. Yo, Takamine. Okay, you're right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I th I think uh, I think it was the Takamine. Um, that's that's uh, I think Tim played a majority of the the acoustic on that. So I I, I can't remember offhand. Nine times out of ten, it would it would have been that Takamine. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend from Japan clarify. That, that I've been saying it wrong all of these years. <laughs> and, uh, I'm glad to actually know how to pronounce it correctly. Thank you. Yeah, most people don't. Takamine, it's actually a mountain in Japan. And, and once they explained to me that it's the name of the company is from a real place, it made sense that it's probably meant to sound like the real Japanese word. <laughs> I would imagine so. Yeah. And now, are you a big effects guy? Do you like a lot of effects on your guitar? Um, well, well, I like the right effect at the right time. Um, I'm a fan of that always. But I do find there, there has to be a balance of the believability that you're playing it and performing it versus it being clouded in a bunch of effects or copy paste or something like that. So, um, but yeah, facts. Let's talk about that all day. I mean, you know, I'm I'm a big fan of all of it, just used in the right context. Yeah. So tell me some of the some of the effects that you made use of on the Licorice Quartet Threesome Volume One. Well, one surprisingly is very easy, uh, and it's it's something I I love to mess with a lot, and it's the particle verb on the line six M five, a little you know, uh, small, what is it, one effect at a time. Um, I've had that in my pedal board for quite a while, and it's that particle verb is, is just a great dreamy, you know, ambient-sounding, shoegazy sort of sound, and it uh, that comes in handy in, in some places, you know. Um, but mainly, um, I work with conditioning the tone with the amps and the guitar first um and then anything that i can do after that is is gravy but i really like to try to get the tonality right and the um so i have a lot of tone conditioning pedals in my board uh like a high a low pass filter and uh, a parametric eq and some different gain boosts you know that are nominal but highly effective that's how I like to put it. Yeah. Now you meant you mentioned the Squire and the Telecaster. Um, I, I got I got a really great laugh out of going back and watching the original electronic press kit from Imperial Drag um, many years ago. And and in mo in some of the shots there, you were playing Gibson. Um, you know, have. Well, I, I love my Gibsons, no question. Yeah. I've got a beautiful 78 that I've had uh, since Jellyfish. It's a kind of a cherry red uh, number, standard. And uh, that guitar here, it's a very special, beautiful sounding instrument. Uh, and then I just recently got another near last fall too, so I'm bringing that one in. But uh, yeah, guitars. I love them all. I love Fenders and uh, Gibsons. You know what I mean? Like whatever it takes to kind of get the job done in the studio, you kind of have to be for it, right? Yeah. Now I was talking yesterday with Roger, um, and he mentioned there are there are two more EPs in the works. Have you finished recording all of the guitar for the subsequent records yet? Uh. Yeah. The answer to that would be yes. For the most part, these um, dozen tracks are done, and 
We'll have some fine tuning to do on them as we go along, finishing them. Some are, um, you know, they're all like, I want to say 85% done. Mm -hmm. We we would have maybe sit down, uh, devote some time to just kind of wrapping them up. But yeah, there you go. A dozen tracks. And are you creating all of this working remotely or, you know, how did, you know, because you guys are not all in the same place like years ago, are you? Uh, no. Well, you know, Tim is uh, in Atlanta. Roger and I are in L.A. Oh, okay. um, we're, we're, we're pretty far across town from each other, but that's no big deal. It's just, um, no, we, we, um, we kind of did a combination of things. Uh, you know, we all have home studios, so obviously we're going to want to try to to capture some things there that we need to, but we did a lot of things at Frankie Sargusa's place in uh, Highland Park. So a lot of our ensemble singing and, uh, you know, a lot of uh, different types of overdubs and, and parts were recorded at his studio um, for the most part, for the bulk of it. And, and what are you most excited about or most proud of with the new record? Uh, what am I most proud of? Uh, well, I'm just happy again that Tim and Roger and I have uh, established this reconnection and, and we're able to uh, freely sit in a room together and, and try to come up with some, uh, you know, some songs that we feel strong about. And um, so, you know, this experience for me so far has been 100% positive. I have uh, no complaints whatsoever. I'm, I'm, astounded at how well it's been received very grateful for that and uh yeah excellent and um you know i was you know something i was laughing laughing thinking about your songwriting process back on the back on the very old epk on the press kit from imperial drag you were talking about the song playboy after dark um, and writing about dealing with the HIV virus at the time. Do you think that the COVID-19 pandemic might influence a new song today? Well, do you mean, it? will it influence the paradigm? Uh, and the answer is absolutely yes. You know, there's no question. It's like a ripple in uh, the strata of, of society, you know, it's like, it's, hit everyone in the world at the same time like a giant atom bomb so um, you know nothing will really ever be the same from this point for a while but they'll change i guess is the only way you can put it I really into a this isn't such a big um deal and we have the resources enabled uh, to deal with it and that's really all i can say yeah. So, so what is next for you when when we get out of this quarantine? What's next for you with guitar coming up? Well, I I I do a lot of live performance, you know, around LA and kind of worldwide, just depending on what's going on. Like I did a tour with um, the Lost Angels about a year ago in uh, the UK and uh, Belgium, and uh, which is sort of more of hard rock roots and um i'm also recording a a, a new sextus um uh, you know ep of six songs and uh so I, I keep myself pretty busy there i i do miss playing live in front of people though that's really still uh something that really satisfies me greatly yeah excellent well the new the new ep is great and i know fans of a lot of your classic work are going to be in heaven listening to it. And we wish you great success with with the you know with the new venture with the licorice quartet. And um